Turn top EU stories from the unit website include EU sets deadline for Germany to scrap mobile rate plan and outside EU migrants are using a backdoor route to gain UK citizenship. Rising coal use burns EU emissions efforts and EU warns Ireland it could expand tax probe beyond Apple. Plus, Switzerland proposes immigration quotas as EU standoff looms. It's Monday, 7th of July. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. EU sets deadline for Germany to scrap mobile rate plan. The European Commission gave Germany three months to abandon its plans to hike the fees mobile operators can charge each other for connecting calls on Friday, saying they lead to rates more than 80% higher than in other countries. The EU executive issued a first warning to the German telecoms regulator over its plans to raise the so-called mobile termination rates in April. But the Bundesnetzangunter, B NetZA, failed to address its concern. The German regulator has calculated mobile termination rates in a way which differs from the Commission's recommended approach, the Commission said in a statement. B NetZA has three months to convince the Commission that it will amend its tariffs. If it fails to do so, the Commission will follow up with more formal warnings, which could ultimately lead to court proceedings and fines. Outside EU migrants using backdoor routes to gain UK citizenship. Migrants from outside the European Union have been using backdoor routes, including sham marriages, to gain British citizenship, according to a new UK government probe. According to a report by the Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration, sham marriages to EU citizens living in Britain are growing as non-Europeans try to get round UK government controls. Our findings suggest that the European citizenship route is becoming an increasingly important way into the UK for those whose origins lie outside the European economic area, particularly now that the immigration rules have been tightened, Chief Inspector John Vine said in his report. Attempted abuse by non-EEA nationals applying on the basis of sham marriages or civil partnerships with European citizens was significant, he said. Rising coal use burns EU emission efforts. The European Union's attempt to cap greenhouse gas emissions over the next 16 years is threatened again as rising pollution from the bloc's biggest economies shows even developed nations want to burn cheap coal. Germany, Europe's largest economy, boosted consumption of the fuel by 13% in the past four years, while use in Britain, number three in the region economically, rose 22%. Statistics from oil company BP PLC show. Now, while Germany pledged to cut heat trapping gases 55% by 2030 from 1990 levels, it's managed 25% so far and it's moving in the wrong direction, according to the European Environment Agency. The EU is seeking to craft a deal in October that would cut greenhouse gases 40% by 2030 in the world's biggest effort to combat global warming since the Kyoto Climate Treaty of 1997. EU warns Ireland it could expand tax probe beyond Apple. The European Commission has told Ireland it may investigate more companies as part of a probe into the country's tax practices after announcing its formal probe into Apple Inc.'s Irish subsidiaries, a person familiar with the matter said on Friday. The EU is investigating whether Ireland, Luxembourg and the Netherlands have attracted investment and jobs by helping big companies avoid tax in other countries, including EU members. Corporate profit shifting has come under the international spotlight in recent years, following reports of how companies such as Apple and Google Inc. use complex structures to slash their tax bills. The Commission suspects Ireland was too lenient in rulings it gave to Apple, and which helped the company shield tens of billions of dollars in profit from tax, and has asked Dublin for information on the rulings it gave the iPhone maker. Switzerland proposes immigration quotas as EU standoff looms. 
Switzerland proposed limiting the number of new immigrants from European Union countries as a standoff with the 28-member bloc looms over the government's attempt to implement the results of a February vote on foreigners. The proposal features quotas and a maximum number of new immigrants in Switzerland, the government said in an emailed statement today. Now, while the system still includes preferential treatment of citizens from the EU, of which Switzerland isn't a member, the European Commission said that any system featuring restrictions of movement is irreconcilable with EU-Swiss treaties. The Swiss government's steps come in response to a national referendum in February that required it to introduce measures to stop mass immigration. A fifth of Switzerland's 8 million inhabitants aren't citizens. The majority of newcomers come from EU states such as Italy and Germany. So those that follow the unit regularly will know that we are going through an internal transition at the moment. With the retirement of Trevor Coleman MEP, we have also lost the funding from the European Parliament. Now you'll notice of course that the various declarations that were imposed upon us by the EU have now been removed and we are entirely unfunded at this time. Now we're busily working in the background to organise new funding initiatives and I will have more news on that in the short term. Of course, our staff are now back on the open employment market and that means that any input that they have to the unit is voluntary. We are working very hard to maintain continuity of service and when I am not writing scripts or recording news, I'm busy writing software automation to try to maintain the services that we have offered. So this note is really an apology ahead of time for any disruption that you might experience in our services. We are working as hard as we possibly can to maintain a service that has enlightened so many people to the true nature and agenda of the European Union. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.